If you're going to use Illustrator on a daily basis, the pen tool is just something that you have to learn. You can probably get by by making some shapes using just the rectangle, the ellipse, the star, but to really harness the power that Illustrator has, the pen tool is a necessity. So if you go down in the description, you can actually download a copy of the file that I'm going to use and follow along with me as we're building this file out. I think it's the best way to learn rather than just watching me do something and then say, okay, now go out and do it yourself. So go ahead, grab the file from Dropbox. You'll see the link down below and I'll, I'll just, I'll meet you in Illustrator. Okay, so you should have your file open inside of Illustrator. Now I saved this as an Adobe Illustrator CS6 file. So if you've got something older than that, this may not work for you, but you shouldn't have any problems. It's a pretty basic file. Anything newer than that, you won't have any issues at all because all we're using is the pen tool. Now a couple of quick checks before we get started. I like to hit Command-0 on my keyboard. That brings the file up so I can actually see it. It's a decent size now to work on. Inside of your Layers palette, now if you don't see layers over here on the side, which is this icon here, you can go up to Window, and then down to Layers, or as you can see here, you can also hit F7 on your keyboard to bring up the Layers palette. What I've done for this file is just saved it with this layer locked called Flag Sketch, and I've knocked the opacity down to 10%, just so we can use it as a working layer, but we can get rid of it afterwards once we've got our vector. So I can get to my pen tool up here on the side, or I can hit P on the keyboard. If you've been watching me for a while or any of my other tutorials, you know I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit P on my keyboard. And we're gonna start with a stroke. Now if I start drawing now, let me just do a couple of anchor points here. And then escape out of it, just to stop drawing. and if you notice it's all gone so what I want to make sure I'm doing is starting with a black stroke and I'm gonna push this one up to about eight point you don't have to go this thick it's kind of what I find is a good balance for most of the drawings and stuff that I do uh, and you can always change it afterwards so to get started I kinda of wanna pick a point where I can work my way around this drawing and I normally go for somewhere in the middle and then work my way out around and back over. You could do this in a few different ways. I'm gonna show you my way of doing it. Feel free to play around with this afterwards, delete strokes, whatever you need to do to kind of learn how to do this. There's modifier keys that we're gonna look at, which are gonna be the command and the option key or the control and the alt key if you're on a PC. And I'm gonna make my first anchor point right here. Now, what you're gonna see is this little rubber band that comes out, and this tells me where I'm gonna put my next anchor point. So it gives me a little clue. We're working around a corner here, and there's a few different ways you could do this. I like to use a couple of different anchor points for it, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my next anchor point right about here, just before the corner, and I'm gonna click and hold and drag out my handles. And you see that gives me a nice little curve here when I let go, you can see I now have my stroke. And we've got this rubber band now. So this again tells me where my next stroke is going. Now if you see, I've got a really bad curve there and I need something a little bit tighter. This one's a little bit too big. So I'm gonna use a modifier key here. I'm gonna hold down the command key. And you'll see this turns into my direct selection tool. And I can grab this handle and push it back. And by doing that, I've now made this angle a little tighter and I can make my second click and drag out a little bit to give myself a rounded edge and then I can keep moving on. Now again, you'll notice we're kind of straight on this line and I want something that's gonna curve in on this one. So here I'm gonna use a different modifier key afterwards. I'm gonna click and drag. And this time, instead of using the command, I'm actually going to hold down my Alt. And you'll see it changes again to my Anchor Point tool. And what this does, this allows me to only move just this one handle. So it keeps this handle separate from the other one. 
And that way when I come back out, I've now got a different angle. Now this isn't the angle that I want, so I'm going to go ahead and just make some changes here. I'm going to pull this up a little bit more. And then I can come over here and drag out this corner. So now we've got our first two done. We're going to go down. And again, I'm going to click just before the corner. And drag out so that I get a nice little curve there. Now here we're getting into a compound or a complex angle because there's two different curves here. I've got a curve coming around this way and then another curve right away going the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and use my modifier again. Now for this one I'm going to use the command key because I want to keep this the same angle and by pulling this back in you'll see I'm going to keep that as close as I possibly can and now when I come up here and do my next angle I can actually start just kind of into the center pull it a little bit and I get that nice little curve down here. Okay, so now that I have this one, I'm going to come up and we're going to do this curve and I'm actually going to start again. I'm going to click right about here and pull out just a little bit. And then I'm going to come around and give that angle right there. Now remember, keep in mind when you're doing this that your sketch is just a guideline. It's not something that's meant to be an exact, this isn't set up so that it has to look exactly like the sketch. You've got some freedom here. Do what feels right and what looks right once you get it in here and start working with it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up the outline here. Uh, I'll speed this up a little bit and we'll come back once I get to the two lines. All right, so there's our outline finished. Now, before I move ahead and start putting these intersecting lines in here, I wanna go ahead and actually hold down my command key and you'll see that I turn into the direct selection tool and just click anywhere off on the artboard. It's important to do this when you're building vectors that have lines that are gonna be running across other lines that you maybe don't want joined. And I'll show you why. If I just, if I just back up here, let me join this up again. And now if I were to continue drawing and say I wanted to draw this line, when I hover over the stroke here, I get that little plus sign. That's now going to add an anchor point. So if I wanted to draw this, well, it's not connecting anything because all it did was drew an anchor point there. So let me back up, Command Z, get rid of that anchor point. So again, hold down Command, click somewhere. And now I can actually start right on that line as a guideline and then come down here and pull out my line for that one. And if you see I've got this rubber band again that's going to follow me around. Well I don't want to continue on. I just want to stop drawing now. So I'm going to hit escape and that's escaped out and I've just got that single line. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few lines in here. Again I'll speed this up and then we'll come back when we get to the maple leaf. Okay, so I want to show you something here real quick, and if you've noticed as I've been drawing this, I've got my smart guides on. They're a blessing and a curse, so in this instance, they can be sometimes a bit of a pain because trying to get in here now, and if you see when I hold down command and I want to straighten this out, it's, it's trying to snap to different parts of the flag. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to view, smart guides, and just turn those off for this last point. And now you'll see when I hold down my command key, I've got a little bit more control over this and it's not quite snapping to a bunch of different points on there because I want this bit of a curve here. So now I can come down here and I can click on that and get that little bit of a curve that I want. And you'll see what I mean. So that kind of comes out and then tucks back in. Okay, so I want to start on the, the maple leaf here now. The maple leaf's going to run pretty pretty quick. This is a pretty easy task here. There's just one trick to it because it's got all these little weird angles where I'm coming down at this angle and then going back up. Now to achieve this, I'm going to start off my pen tool. I'm going to add my first anchor point. I'm going to come down to this point where my first little crest is. Click, drag out. And now if I were to try and come up here and do this next one, you'll see I get this little curve in here. Well, that's not what I want. I want this to start from there again and come out at a different angle. So I'm going to back up, Command Z, and on this one, if you see when I hover, 
down at the bottom edge of my pen nib, I have that little anchor point tool icon. And what that means is we're gonna convert this anchor point by clicking on it. So I'm gonna click, and now I'm back to being able to go whichever direction I want from a fresh angle. So I can come up here to this next anchor point where I wanna be, click, drag out, and I get that nice little upward curve. And I can do the same thing for all the rest of these points. So I'm just gonna work through the rest of it and we'll meet you at the end. Okay, so that's it. Now there's some cleanup that I could do to this. You'll see that there's little spots up here. If we zoom in, I'm just gonna hit Z on my keyboard to get my magnifying glass and I can angle out here. So you'll see how this kind of meets up weird. Now I can come in here and play with this a little bit. Play with my angle. And just get that all cleaned up. There's other ways that I can do this and I'm gonna show you guys. We're gonna continue on with this file in a couple of future videos. So I'm gonna show you how to use the Shape Builder tool to be able to do some fills on this. We're gonna use the Smooth tool on this file and we're gonna also do some extra exercises with the Shaper tool, which is something a little bit different than the Shape Builder tool. So stay tuned for that in some upcoming videos. All right, so that's the pen tool. Pretty easy to use once you understand some of the basics of it. Now again, these aren't advanced tutorials. I'm gonna get to those later on down the road so that any of my subscribers that are an intermediate or a beginner aren't gonna get lost and just decide to leave because they're frustrated. Okay, designers, that's it for this one. You know the spiel. Go ahead, click the subscribe button if this is your first time here. Hit the notification bell as well. It really does help us out as YouTubers. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, leave me a comment below. Let's discuss it, talk about what you didn't like about it. Maybe I can make some changes in the future and help you learn something. Okay, I gotta get back to work now again, so get out there and design something.